Hey everybody, this is Cliff, N4CCB. And I'm going to take a break from working on this Oak Hills Research 100A QRP radio to make a couple other videos about antennas. Now, I've got two antennas that I use that I would call my go-to antennas. The one I want to talk about today is a vertical. Now, what you have, what you're seeing here in front of me in this bag and in this piece of PVC, that's all there is to it. It's so compact that I can put it in my suitcase and with it I can work 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, 10 meters, probably 6 meters. And I can work that, deploy this on concrete or asphalt, uh, in hard packed sand down by the beach, or just in the ground. Or I can clamp it to a picnic table or something. So I want to show you the two components of this. There's the radiating element and then there's the ground system. So here's the radiating element. It's inside here. Notice that it's marked telescopic antenna enclosed. That's so the TSA guys don't get too upset when they find this in my suitcase and don't think it's something else. What it is, is a 17 foot tall stainless steel telescopic whip. MFJ makes this. It's about 60 bucks and it's great. So by itself, you can extend it all the way up to be a quarter wavelength on 20 meters and then back it back down if you want to work 17, 15, 12, or 10. And it, it, like I said, it really works great. And I've got a, a video that I'm going to splice onto the end of this so that you can see it in action. Once this thing is extended for 20 meters, it's 17 feet tall and it's got to have some way to keep from falling over, right? It's not freestanding, but I don't have to have a tree or a fiberglass mast or anything to keep it standing up. So how do I get it to stand up to be the radiating element? Well, I've got a couple of ways. Like I said originally, I can use it to work on concrete or asphalt. To do that, I have a little tripod and I'll put links to these things uh, on here, but this is from Super Antenna and it's got three little aluminum legs. You screw the little legs into these holes, and now it sits about maybe eight inches off the ground. There's a 3 8 by 24 8 connector on this side so that you can screw the uh, radiating element into the antenna. And then it's got a SO239 on the back side for your coax. There's a couple little quick connects hanging off of this, and I'll come back to that in just a second. If I want to deploy this some other way than just a solid surface like concrete or asphalt, I've got this clamp. Now this clamp is from High Sierra's and I'll put a link to this too. It's a jaws clamp that opens a couple of inches on one side. You can clamp it down, clamp it to a picnic table, clamp it to a balcony railing, clamp it to a stake that you've driven in the ground, whether that's in the dirt or in the so or hard sand. And when you do that, the other side of this jaws clamp is a 3 8 by 24 inch connector with the SO239. And you can use a little, I think it's a five millimeter hex key to loosen this up and rotate this 90 degrees so that you can make it, you know, clamp to something this way, but have the antenna going 90 degrees the other way or vice versa. So that's how I get the radiating element to stand up. And that's how I can use it uh, no matter whether I'm on a solid surface or a loose surface, or I have something like a balcony railing to clamp to. So that's only one half of the antenna though, right? That's the radiating element. We've got to have some kind of ground system. Okay, that means I've got to have a way to get to the ground side of the coax so that I can have some radials out there. Um, so there's, there's two things I've done. First of all, uh, I guess this is, I'm already holding this in my hand. Uh, there was a hole right here and I soldered a little wire onto a lug, put a, a bolt and a little nut against that. On the other side, I soldered a, uh, another bigger lug that has an opening that a quarter inch stainless steel bolt and wing nut can slip through. And I attach my radials that I've soldered lugs onto into here, just tighten them down real tight. On the little tripod mount, it has a couple little quick, con quick connects. And to attach my radials to that, I just made a little pigtail that has a female quick connect on one side and on the other side has my lug with a stainless steel bolt and wing nut. So when I'm in the field, I can just clip this on 
and attach my radials to this. Now I've got two of these because there's two quick connects and it helps me to spread the wires out more evenly than if I just had one. So that's how I get to the ground side. So let's look at my radials. This is an Eagle Creek bag, by the way. Just happened to have it. And it's got two halves. So in one half, I keep these components. The other half, on this side, I keep my coax and my radials. So here's 50 feet of coax. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And I also have an antenna analyzer here. And you'll see this in just a minute in another video that I'm splicing onto this. But here are my radials. Now, what I did is I cut three wires to a quarter wavelength at 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. I cut the insulation off the ends, twisted them together, soldered them onto a lug that has a quarter inch opening so that I can use that um, with my little wing nut system on the other side. So I've got three wires attached to one lug and I actually made up eight sets of these for 24 radials total, which is kind of overkill. So I normally just use four of them and I still have 12 radials, which is good. Um, and even though I've cut them to 20, 15, and 10, they still work just fine for 17 meters and 12 meters. And you know, you cut these to the right length based on the math, but once you lay these things on the ground, they're kind of detuned anyway, so the length isn't critical. So that's it. That's everything I need to set up 20 meters down through or up through 10 meters uh, in a very compact way that I can travel with. And now I'm going to show you a video that I made yesterday where I took this on my bicycle to a location and set it up so that you can see how it works. Okay, so I have deployed the antenna and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Uh, here's my bike. I have a uh, antenna analyzer sitting here. We'll come back to that in just a second. So the coax is running uh, down this way. I'm using the uh, little tripod base. If I start painting up here, you'll see that the antenna is fully extended about 17 feet, 16 feet. And down here at the base, you'll see that I've got my little pigtails attached with my wing nuts on both sides leading to the radials and the radials are just branching out in all directions and they're not super critical how they're lined up but more signal does flow toward the wires so if you had your radials laid out in one direction the signal would tend to uh, go that way and the pattern would be distorted it would not be omnidirectional so going back here to the antenna analyzer, I've got it set for 14.07 megahertz. And you can see a nice fly, which I will shoo away. And uh, you can see that the SWR right now is 1.5 to 1 on the PSK31 frequency of 20 meters. And uh, that's going to hold true for all the lower portion, the CW portion. Now I'm going to change the frequency and get up here a little bit into where you talk. And you can see now that it's 1.3 to 1 at 14.270. So we have a really good antenna uh, with a good ground. And now we can fire up the radio and have a chat with somebody. So, how about that? That's a real world example of how to set this thing up so that you can work five different ham bands, whether you've got support structures or not. Now, I'm gonna follow this video up with another video in the not too distant future that's gonna show you my other go-to antenna for QRP and working portable, which is a SOTA Beams linked dipole. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.